Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making a biscuit and gravy casserole. Now this casserole is about as simple as it can get and it's the perfect breakfast for when you've got company, Sunday morning, just whatever. It'd even be a good church breakfast. And you don't have to make your biscuits from scratch. Now I'm going to, but you can use canned biscuits if you want to. There's no judgment here and in these days and times we got to do whatever it takes to put a meal on the table for our family. So, for our gravy, we need a pound of sausage. And if you need to, you can use a half a pound of sausage. Stretch your budget a little bit. And I'm making a lot of gravy to go in mine. I'm going to make three and a half cups of gravy. And we're going to make this gravy kind of thin. Normally, we would use two tablespoons of flour for every cup of gravy. I'm using about a tablespoon of flour because I want this thin. I'm going to put it in the oven and cook it. And if you remember from our other gravy videos, it's going to thicken up as it cooks. So you also need some salt and some pepper and that's pretty much it. You can use any kind of sausage you want to, hot, mild, whatever. And you can put other spices other than salt and pepper in it if you want to. And I'm just making a simple three ingredient biscuit. I have two cups of self-rising flour, three quarters of a cup of milk, and a quarter of a cup of butter. So let's get our pan heating because we want our pan hot before we put our sausage in it. That's going to help keep our sausage from sticking. Now for our biscuits, we're going to start by dumping our flour in the bowl. You can sift it if you want to, but you don't have to. Sifting it will give you a lighter, fluffier biscuit. And I'm going to just whisk it a little bit, which will put some air back in it, and it'll bust up any lumps, which is kind of the same thing that sifting does. And then I'm going to cut my butter in it. Now, if you're new to biscuit making, you can take as long as you want to do this part. You can just mix and mix and mix and mix and mix, and it's not going to hurt your biscuits. It's once you add your milk that you have to be careful. You don't want to overwork biscuits. That will make them hard. And I'm just going to cut my butter in here with my whisk that I use to whisk my flour and just kind of cut it off in small pieces and like twist it in there. You don't need to buy anything special and you can do this with a fork and a lot of times I do do it just with a fork. I'll take a fork and whisk my flour a little bit and then I'll cut my butter in with a fork. You can also get a pastry blade that will cut the butter in for you. And I have one here in the kitchen somewhere. It was actually a gift. And speaking of gifts, yes, Debbie, I do love it. I went to the mailbox the other day and this was in there. Debbie had sent it to me. And the bottom of it has a camper and a campfire and chairs and stuff on it. And this is a lodge skillet. Thank you so much, Debbie. But lots of folks, folks ask what you have to do to a new skillet when you get it. All I did with this was I washed it because it's been in several trucks and sitting in warehouses and stuff. And you do want to wash it before you use it. And then I oiled it good. And the first several times that you use new cast iron, you're going to want to oil it really, really good. And after that, you just wash it and season it a little bit when it needs it. Let me go ahead and get my sausage cooking because my pan should be hot. Oh yeah. And we're going to bust this sausage all up. We're not going to do any of it in slices or anything, but if you wanted to, you could cook half of it in slices and just make your gravy with half of it. Maybe do some sausage biscuits for another morning for breakfast. Now we kind of have to stretch our budgets a little bit and make meals go a little bit farther and half a pound of sausage in this would give you plenty of flavor and it would give you plenty of grease to make your gravy all right we'll let that sit there and cook while we finish getting our biscuits ready and i'm just kind of cooking that on medium heat until it's done and brown you can also cut your butter in your flour just by mashing it with your hands which is probably the fastest, easiest way to do it. 
I've still got some pretty big lumps, so I can show you how to do that too. Kind of pinch it and twist it, all the butter lumps. And you can use Crisco in these if you wanted to, if you wanted a vegetable alternative. You do want to get your chunks of butter or whatever kind of fat you're using in your biscuits fairly fine. Kind of like coarse sand before you add your milk. And like I said, this part, you can take your time. You can work with it all you want to. It's not going to hurt the texture of your biscuits. And actually, the finer you get this, the better your biscuits are going to be. I've seen lots of folks say that you need to freeze your butter to make biscuits and stuff like that. My granny never froze her butter or anything else she's making biscuits with. She did usually sift her flour, but I don't think she even owned a whisk. That wasn't a thing in kitchens when I was growing up. It just wasn't anything that was available to us back then. I don't, wasn't something that <laughs> Gus had in his general store down by the river there. I got that pretty well broke up or crumbled up or whatever and I'm going to give it another little whisk to put a little bit of air back into it because I do want my biscuits kind of fluffy. If you don't have self-rising flour, add a tablespoon of baking powder and about a quarter teaspoon of salt to all-purpose flour if you don't have self-rising. And if you want to do buttermilk biscuits, we have up a video where you can substitute milk and lemon juice or honey for buttermilk. Um, I'm not doing buttermilk. I'm just doing whole milk in mine. And you can use any milk. This is even something you could use all your shelf-stable milk in if you wanted to, the powdered milk or the canned milk. And then we're just going to kind of stir this until the flour and the milk are combined. This is the point where if you overwork your biscuits, they're not going to be good. They're going to be hard and flat and tough. That's combined pretty well. I'm going to fold it over a couple of times, not too many. And then you're going to need just a tiny bit of extra flour. And I've got me a piece of parchment paper out here so that I don't have to spend all day cleaning my countertop off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this out here. Now, I'm not going to cut this into biscuits because if you're using canned biscuits, you're going to want to cut those up in chunks. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut my biscuit dough up into pieces. Now, I've already folded this when I had it in my bowl with my spatula, so I'm not going to do no more folding on here. If you didn't fold it in the bowl with the spatula, you might want to fold it over a couple of times. But I have a really soft dough. And that's what I want right now. And adding more flour into it is going to make it um, firmer. And I don't want it any firmer. That's kind of the consistency you want right there. Hey, I'm using my pizza cutter that I got from a school fundraiser to cut my biscuits with. And you can use anything, any kind of knife. You could even use a butter knife, I suppose, if you wanted to. But I just want to kind of cut them up into pieces about one inch and if you're doing canned biscuits you need at least a big pack of grains and you would want to cut those up into quarters or smaller. You want to get your oven preheated to 375 to 400 depending on your oven. Now I've got mine at 375 which is plenty hot enough in my oven for this. Um, if yours is runs a little cooler you might want to do 400. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put about half of our biscuits into our casserole dish and you don't have to have a fancy cast iron skillet to make these in. You can make it in any kind of casserole dish and for springtime breakfast one of your pretty floured casserole dishes like the ones that Vanessa got me for Christmas would be perfect, especially if you were going to have folks over for breakfast or for brunch. And I am kind of rolling my biscuit pieces in my flour to keep them from sticking together and keep them from sticking to the bottom of my skillet or casserole dish, whatever you're cooking it in. Um, you do want to grease the casserole dish that you're using, especially if you're using a skillet, because we're going to be pouring this gravy in here, and it's going to tend to stick. 
leave a little space because you want to let these rise up and expand in the oven and you also want to be able to pour the gravy down in between them. Now we're going to put this in our preheated oven for 10 minutes. Our biscuits are baking we're going to finish up our gravy. I've also had lots of comments about using metal in my cast iron and it is not going to hurt your cast iron to use metal in it. Um, it's probably the one of the toughest surfaces on earth so this little stainless steel fork is not going to hurt it in the least. And in fact, I'm scraping off everything that's stuck with my fork. It just, it will not hurt the cast iron. I've had this skillet since I got married, which was, oh my goodness, 37 years ago now, almost 38 years. And I have always used forks and metal spatulas in it. Okay, the sausage is done now. Now, if you have a whole lot of grease in your sausage, you might want to take some of it out. I don't like super greasy sausage gravy, um, but you can see I don't have much in here, and most folks would like panic over that, and they'd be getting out the baking grease and adding it to it, but every single piece of this sausage has grease on it. So I'm not adding any more grease to it. If the bottom of the pan is shiny, that's good with me. Uh, you really don't need much grease to make gravy. It's the flour that thickens it, not the grease. The grease flavors it. But we've got all this sausage in here that's also gonna give it flavor. So we don't need no whole bunch of grease. Now sprinkle your flour around over top of your sausage. And we're gonna add some salt and pepper to this. Um, it's kind of to taste, and I'm going to do about half teaspoon of each. You can add more if you like, or you can add less, and you can even salt and pepper it on the table. You don't have to add, add any because there is spices in your sausage. But you're going to want something to flavor all this milk. Okay, now stir up your flour. And we're going to cook this flour just a little bit. And you can see there it's sticking all to the bottom of my pan perfectly fine. We want to stir it in here and as long as all of our flour, all the white kind of disappears, we've got enough grease. We don't need to add any. And you can see it disappear in there as I stir it. We don't want to see any more white when we get it stirred up. And as long as we got that, we got plenty of grease. And now remember, we made this, we're making this thinner because we're gonna be putting it in the oven and cooking it for 20 minutes in the oven. And the longer you cook gravy, the thicker it gets. Not only that, we've got flour on our biscuits and in our biscuits. And that flour that's on and in our biscuits is also gonna thicken up our gravy in our casserole. So make it thin, just a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more per cup of gravy that you're making. And you can make anywhere from two to six cups to go in this casserole. Just make sure your casserole dish will hold it. All right, that flour is all absorbed and it's browning and it's sticking to the bottom of the pan. And you want that, that brown on the bottom of your pan. That's gonna flavor your gravy and it's gonna give it some color. So we're just gonna pour our milk in here. And stir. And I've seen folks add their milk a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. There ain't no need for that. I'm holding my fork kind of flat on the bottom of my pan and just rubbing it around because I wanna get all that stuff out of the bottom of the pan. That's where all the flavor is. That's also where all the flour is and it ain't gonna get thick at all if you don't do that. As you rub it, you can feel the stuff coming off the bottom of the pan. The bottom of your pan will get smooth again and that's what you want. You wanna feel it getting nice and smooth and then you know you've got everything off the bottom and your gravy's gonna thicken as your milk heats. And like I said, this is gonna be thin. Now folks around here, they make a meal out of just biscuits and gravy. And if you don't want to do the casserole, if you just want to make biscuits and gravy, this is exactly how you make biscuits and gravy, only you would use two tablespoons of flour per cup of milk in your gravy so that it's thick enough. And if it happens to be a little bit too thick, you just add a little bit more milk to it. 
I served anything at all with this, I would serve like some fried apples or some fresh in-season fruit. And that would probably be the only thing that I would serve with this. Folks that want something sweet for breakfast, maybe you could put a little honey on the table and let them drizzle a little honey over the top of it. I think that would probably be pretty good with it. But other than that, I just wouldn't do a thing with this. Just the biscuit and gravy and maybe a little fruit. Now in 10 minutes, these are pretty close to done, but not quite. We're not going to do anything else to them. We're just going to leave them like that. And if you look at our gravy over here, we've kind of got some light spots in the middle there. It is just barely starting to boil. And that's what we want. We want it just barely starting to boil. Maybe get just a tad more of a boil on it here. And we don't want to let this sit. We want to work pretty quick here at this point. And you can see this gravy is very thin. It is only slightly thicker than milk but it's going to get thicker as it bakes in the oven. This is a good recipe to, um, you can take this camping and you can cook this in your Dutch oven on top of your camp stove or on a fire. Um, it will cook completely in your Dutch oven. Now, if I was cooking it on the stove top in a Dutch oven, I would flip these biscuits, the ones that are in the bottom over and then add my gravy and put the biscuits on the top. That'll help keep the bottom biscuits from burning as it finishes cooking. But since we're putting them in the oven, they'll be fine just like that, not touching them. All right, now our gravy's boiling. You can see some of the pieces kind of moving around in there. It's barely boiling, but it is boiling, and that's all you want. It's getting much thicker on the bottom, and it's thickening up a little bit. Kind of scrape the edges again and give the bottom one more stir and then we're going to pour it over top of our biscuits that we've got about half baked here. And you can see that's really thin but don't worry about it it will thicken up. Some of my biscuits are floating up there. Y'all stay in the bottom. I got more for the top. And about three cups of gravy is all you can make in this size pan. This is a 10 inch pan. If you were using a casserole dish, you would want to go with a, a good a nine by nine that's kind of deep um, or one of the like eight by 11s or whatever it is. And if you wanted more gravy, do a bigger dish and might have to do a few more biscuits but just drop the rest of your biscuit pieces in here and kind of scatter them out. And we're going to put them back in the preheated oven for about 20 minutes. Don't need my fork. Or until it gets good and brown and done. If it starts to get too brown in your oven and your biscuits are not done, you can cover it up with foil and that'll keep it from, you know, getting overdone. Now we're just going to put this back in our 375 to 400 degree oven, kind of depending on your oven, for 20 minutes. While we're waiting on our casserole to finish, and it's almost done, I want to share 2 Corinthians 4.18 with you. While we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, for things which are seen are temporal, but things which are not seen are eternal. If you spend all of your time looking at the temporary things, the temporal things, all of your time focusing on them, you are going to have a very hard time finding peace and joy. Because by very definition, those things which are temporary are constantly changing and there's turmoil and there's chaos. And the things in this world, there's going to be turmoil in this world. The Bible tells us that. And if we are focusing on those changing things, those temporary things, those things that cause turmoil and chaos, which is what the world is all about, we are never going to be able to find peace and joy. It's when we seek God. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. When we seek God, when we see the eternal things, that's when we have true peace, true hope, and true joy. And if you are in need of a faith boost this morning, if you are suffering from the chaos of this world, I want to suggest that you read that full chapter of 2 Corinthians 4 
because it really is one of those light chapters that helps us to focus on God and His kingdom and on how we are supposed to be living our lives. So maybe take a few minutes and read that today and see the eternal things so that you can find some peace and some joy and some happiness and some hope. Let's see what this casserole looks like because I think it is almost done. Okay, it has been in the oven for 20 minutes. It is lightly brown. You could leave it in there a few more minutes if you want it browner, but I'm sure after 20 minutes, my little biscuit pieces are done. And you can see here that this skillet is about as full as it could possibly get. And this super brown little biscuit over here, that's the one that floated up from the bottom when we were adding in our biscuits. I said, oh, I got one floating up. That's the one that was floating up. Now you want to let this sit for maybe five minutes because the gravy is still pretty runny, but you want to give it time to set up. Oh, and I can see I have a nice jiggle in there, which means I got a nice layer of gravy all around my biscuits, and that's what I want. Now, this would be perfect for some of your spring church breakfasts, maybe a Father's Day breakfast at church or something. You could make up several big casserole pans full of this. And if you use canned biscuits, it would be super fast. But I promise you, all the fathers in your church would love you more if you made them some homemade biscuits. But that it's kind of what kind of time you've got. And it would be good for any brunches or breakfast that you've got, you know, with big groups or just a Sunday breakfast. It's just basic biscuits and gravy made together in a casserole. So whatever occasion you've got going on, if it's Sunday breakfast or if you've got a whole bunch of folks and you've got to make a big pan full, this is a, a basic, simple, old-fashioned country breakfast. Like I said, just biscuits and gravy. It's fairly inexpensive, especially if you cut the sausage down and did a half pound of sausage instead of a whole pound or you found it on sale. Watch them grocery store sales. I have... If sausage is not on sale, it's pretty high right now, but you can still find it on sale. So watch the sales and it stays good for a pretty long time. I wanted to kind of dip this out, but I didn't want to dip it out too soon. Oh yeah, we can get some out. I'd probably let it sit at least five minutes before I served it, but... Oh, yep, look at that. And just dip you out a little extra gravy to go on there. My goodness. This casserole here would feed, oh, six people at least. You can reheat it. Now, if you reheat it, you might want to um, add a little bit of milk into it to thin the gravy back out because every time you reheat it, that gravy is going to get thicker. The more you cook gravy, the thicker it gets. And as this cools, if you let it sit five minutes, this gravy is going to be twice as thick as it is right now. So keep that in mind when you're making it. You know, don't think, oh my goodness, I want my gravy thicker than when she dipped that out. This is going to get a whole lot thicker as it cools. It's very, very hot right now. I hope y'all enjoy this simple basic recipe. And I'm going to link our breakfast playlist in here so you can get a lot more ideas for breakfast. And I've all, that fried apple video is in there. I said this would be excellent with some fried apples if you wanted something to serve with it. And that would even be something else good to add to all of your big church breakfasts and stuff for a big Sunday breakfast. Thank you so much for joining us again in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you have not already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.